The spine is made up of muscles, bones, and nerves. The spine is held together by discs, connective tissues, tendons, and ligaments. The elements combine to allow us to stay, but the tension is applied. The lower back makes up the most massive structure of bones and joints, with the joints in the hips. The hip joints connect to the pelvis, joining the elements listed above in the spine and, finally, the sacrum. Larger bones join in the legs, where support and strength can be obtained to support the vertical spine. The bones thicken on the opposite side of the spine or spinal cord and continue up to the neck. The thicker joints begin in that area and continue to join with denser bones, which begin to shrink and dilute in the joints. The largest group of bones is in the lower area and joins the spine. At the small baseline and close to the upper structure, these bones come together and cause stress on the back. The legs can move. Therefore, additional pressure is applied. The tension continues in the lumbar spinal disc. This disc is also affected by stress. To give an example, if you took a 2000 pound object, you would have the same amount of weight applied if you sat on the couch. In the upper back, we also have muscles, which are shorter and help us to maneuver the arms and the skull. Now, if you consider the elements mentioned in this article, you may wonder how it can cause back pain. Pulling on a pair of khaki pants or tights can create unusual tension. The tension affects the lower back and the upper back, causing pain. The reason behind this is that the upper muscles cannot compensate for the pressure group that occurs in the lower region. Back pain can also arise from the advantage we get from the spine, such as control over the body. The spine has a central focus, and this is to give us that control or advantage of standing, walking, running and sitting, and so on. Due to this control, we have, however, that if we took 20 pounds, it would be the same as applying about 200 pounds to the bones, muscles, and spine. Now, if you think about what I just said, you would see that, as people who often take the spine for granted, still, the force we receive is present in the tendons, muscles, ligaments, etc., and because the stress we apply is higher than the spine can support, injuries occur. Of course, we all have to stand, sit, walk, move, and perform daily activities. However, in doing so, we are applying stress to the spine more than we realize. In short, taking a single cup of coffee is heavier than you might think. When someone considers the spine, they must also consider weight, depth, and distance from end to end. As the spine is composed of small and large bones, in addition to thin and thick bones and joints, the vertebrae in all areas exert their degree of strength and establish limits in the lower and upper back. As you can see, the pressure we apply daily to the spine gradually increases and causes pain in the back and upper back. We must still consider the flexion inadequate. However, how weight is used when someone lifts heavy objects and fails to bend appropriately.